how I maintain my health at 59 years old. Guys, I am so humble for this. Every day I wake up, kind of feel myself and say, all right, wake up, go to the bathroom, get the coffee, how am I doing? And I'm healthy, guys. This is how I maintain my health and my labs. So I'm presenting my labs to you guys today. This is my A, B, C, D approach. You can do this too. This is just for you guys. Again, the focus is young men, you wanna do it early to middle age, even if you're older, in your 50s or older, 60s, 70s, you could always understand this as I'm an internal medicine doctor, primary care guy with history. This is how we do it to keep people healthy. I've broken it down A, B, C, D for you guys. And I want, when I talk about my A, B, C, Ds, I want this to be the main video. So let's go. The focus is really for young men that are on androgens from TRT all the way through to steroids. Like I have a history of using steroids when I was in my 20s. And then by the time I was to my late 20s, I had to be on testosterone for life because I shut myself down. And then around that time, 20s and late 20s, 30s and 40s, I was actively, as I was trained to be a physician, I was a physician in my late 30s and 40s, went to school a little late, a little late bloomer, guys. But I knew I was gonna be on testosterone. I love powerlifting, I love lifting big, still do today, but I didn't wanna have a heart attack. So I really developed these protocols on myself as I was a physician, internal medicine, which is internal organs, guys. It's the heart, the kidneys, the liver, the guts. So this is really from the heart, guys, for me. And I wanna show you exactly how to do it. So put the thinking caps on. Let's start with A, hemoglobin A1C and glycemic control. This is A, this is in the world of cardiac disease, you have to look at people are overweight, they're gonna be pre-diabetic, and then how many people in the world are type two diabetic? Now, this is not for people that are really type two diabetic. This is for guys that are in the pre-state or even way before the pre-state. So you wanna understand your ABCDs. A, hemoglobin alpha one carboxylation, mine, and look at it here in the labs, guys. Look at these labs I just did, September 12th, 2023, about a month ago. My A1C is 5.1%. It's perfect, right? It doesn't have to be lower. I'm gonna talk about this today, guys. And you wanna get more information, you come to the man-to-man -man meetings because that's what I'm scaling all my information for every guy in the world on the anabolicdocapp.com. You could get this, you could understand this. So my, my A1C is 5'1". I've been up to 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, because I was getting a little fat, eating food, getting older, just genetic. And I like to be a little heavier for powerlifting, right? But it's not good for the A1C and the blood pressure and the cholesterol. So I realize that there's a set point of weight I have to keep to keep my A1C down, but I also did more. I'm gonna go into that in a minute because I'm gonna talk about the medicines really carefully here, guys. I want it to be evidence-based just for me, what I did, but what you can do, but you have to understand, you have to work with your own healthcare providers. Now, my fasting glucose is 88 milligrams per deciliter. This is after 12 hours of fasting. These are absolutely important for you guys to understand. Let's look at the goals for A1C and fasting glucose. The goal of your hemoglobin A1C, which is, this is a metric across the world for diagnosing and for monitoring glycemic states, prediabetes and diabetes. You wanna keep your hemoglobin A1C less than 5.7%. Look right here on the reference range that we're writing here for you. If you're 5.7 to 6.4, you're called impaired fasting glucotic state and you're pre-diabetic. There's half of America is in this state or near this state. And then if you're equal to or greater than 6.5 on a hemoglobin A1C, not just once, but if it's really something like, well, you know, your doctor says that you've been there, 
your A1C is elevated to 6.5 or greater and your glucose is over, we'll say 126 or greater, and you've checked it multiple times, you are now a type 2 diabetic. Now, this is not, we're not talking type 1 diabetes here. Some of this stuff is very similar, but there's some really different uh, constraints and criteria, okay? This is for people getting older, for you guys. A, B, C, D, you want to maintain perfect health like me, man. Look at my labs, mom. And like, how did I do it? Let's talk about it. And the goal of the fasting glucose is less than 99. But you see I'm 80 in the 80s. No one's going to argue that if you're 98 or 99, or if you're, you really want to be less than 100, right? So 99 less than, but if you're 97, 98, and your A1C is getting up to five, six, and five, you're just under, you're, you got to pay attention, guys. This should be way under these. Don't get crazy. But it should be under these. Really perfect glycemic index, if you talk to the endocrine guys, is, is a fasting glucose in the 80s. Not lower. Don't need lower. And it could be in the 70s. And it gets, gets squirrely if it gets too low. But I, I have too much to cover. And we're talking about just basic stuff on paper. A1C, mine's 5.1. And my sugar's 88. Like, I saw it. I was stoked. And I'm 190-something pounds. I'm 59 years old. I know I was 58 for the test, guys. But a week or two later, I'm 59. I feel like a million bucks. But I'm going to show you everything I do. So weight control, weight control, weight control. You got to lose weight. You got to stay lean. You got to cut the carbs. You got to do There's a million ways to do it with interval fasting and stuff. If it works for you and your coach is, is good on this, do it. There's a lot of roads to roam here, guys. There's a lot of ways to do this. Weight control, carbs. I like high-intensity interval training, and having muscle is excellent for glycemic control. More muscle you got, less body fat you got, you're going to have better glycemic control. This is all evidence-based. So you want to lose the weight. That's why these meds are there if you could use them and then get down. But let's go into the medicines. Now, again, for this video, we're going to talk about how did I get how does my A1C stay so low continuously, daily, weekly, monthly, annually? How do I do it? Well, I try to keep my weight down. I do watch what I eat, but guys, I eat pretty much anything I want, just portion control, but I don't eat bad food all the time. I just don't do it. I don't every night go to Dairy Queen, but I wish I could, but I don't want to. So you got to lose weight. You got to stay lean. Medications. And guys, there are supplements that are great, but I was going to go into the supplements, but it's just too much information. And I'm not saying that I'm, I don't want to be this Western doctor and like bash supplements. I'm making my own supplement. You guys will see it, but it's, it's going to be evidence-based more for the straight heart stuff directly itself and the things that really work. But this is, I know there are supplements for this guys, but it's never going to compare to some real medications that I feel are, are consistent. They've been out there sustainable for years and they're safe. Metformin. I take metformin, extended release, better for the gut, better tolerated. I take it once at night, 750. Now, I wrote down right here, ER, you, guys, you can work with your doctors and you can get extended release metformin, 500. You start once, typically with a nighttime meal. Okay, you take it with the meal and you have to get over some of the gas and some of the bloating. And if you have terrible stuff with that, you can't use it. This is not for everyone. But you can go up to 750, even 1,000. And so this is like, again, for the pre-states, guys, if your A1C is 5.1 or even 5.4 and less, you don't need metformin. Don't take metformin because it doesn't really cause hypoglycemia, but bullshit, it can. And you just don't need it. It's not ethical. But I use it in an armamentarium of my diet, my exercise, because... I, I like to eat food at night. I just try. I'm skinny enough as it is. I don't want to be any skinnier because I don't feel good when I'm too skinny and I'm not strong. You see, I want you guys to think of this. And I like to have my little glass of wine at night, but it's going to affect this. So metformin for me is like, yeah, man, metformin. I feel great on it. And I like the effects. I like the data for prevention like this. There's data for that so you don't become a type 2 diabetic. Absolutely game on. And I like the anti-cancer effects. I happen to like that data. Is it perfect? No, but I like it. It's been out there for years, so everyone's on it, but you may not need it. 
Thank you so much. Let's move on. Now, you see what I wrote here? GLP-1 agonist and sodium glucose co-transporter 2s. SGL2T inhibitor. Guys, semaglutide Monjaro. Those are the GLP-1. Jardians and Farsiga. Guys, it's beyond the scope of this video today, but I want to show you these medicines. Everyone obviously is on semaglutide and Monjaro, right? So they're on different combinations of this. They're, 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 some of them are brand name, you know, with this, when they're looking at brand names, some are the, the generic, you can get them at, at, at peptide places, be careful, you can get them, obviously, you, it's hard to get them directly through the straight retail pharmacy because it's expensive, and you can get them at some compounding pharmacies because the Fed's letting it happen. And if you're overweight and you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, you guys know this is brilliant stuff. I think it's great. Watch the thyroid stuff. Watch the pancreatitis stuff. Watch the interactions. Watch it. Read it. Work with doctors. Come to the man-man meetings. So many people are on these things. But if they work, they're going to get your weight down. Guys, you're going to have better A and glycemic control. You're going to help a help have your life. Better sex. Everything. Using Mother Nature, using some very smart supplements, using medications like this and integrating them, guys, is going to be key. So that's it with A. Let's move on to B. B is blood pressure. Now, you can't see my blood pressure because these are labs, but let's talk about blood pressure because I'm telling you, these ABCDs, guys, are equally all important. A, B, C, and D. There's not one that's more important than the other, but I'll tell you right now, the ABCs, if we could control those, we would not have heart disease. It's possible. Diet, exercise, supplements, medications, behavior. I want to help you guys because I'm an internal medicine doctor and I'm on it. So let's go over blood pressure. Let's hit it. Always, my, again, see the bold up here? My blood pressure is always less than 120 and less than 80, and I'm almost 60. So if, so if you're old, like 75, sorry guys, but if you're 75 or older, you can't have a blood pressure goal like this that's too low. But since my 40s, I've kept my blood pressure low like this with medicines mainly, and my diet, my exercise, we're going to talk about that, evidence-based. But... My blood, my, I, I tolerate that. You know, sometimes my blood pressure will go down as low as like around under 100 or, and then under like 60 or close to 60 and I can feel it. You see, you got to titrate that. You got to have your hand on the pulse, full pun intended. That's why you got to get a blood pressure cuff. Check yourself at home. Home blood pressures are now evidence-based, really more important than what you are in the office. I'm not saying it's not important what you are in the office. I'm just saying that the office can be wrong. And you can have something called mask hypertension when you're actually normal in the office, but you're higher at home. That's usual. That's unusual. Usually you're high in the office and you're, you're, you're lower at home. How? But are you low at home? That's why you need that great blood pressure cuff. There's a, a bunch out there. I like the Omron plat Platinum. I really like it because I like the technology. I like that it's reproducible for me. You wake up in the morning, take your blood pressure. And that be, after you go to the bathroom, you want to see kind of like what you were when you woke up. You like to see it during the night, but you don't need ambulatory blood pressure. This is academic. Don't get crazy with the ambulatory stuff, guys. Ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. This is going to be good enough. And then you really want to get an idea for your blood pressure during the day, during the, at, at, at the end of the day. You want that you can, you can work around it. So goal blood pressure, you can see mine. Less than 120, less than 80. If you're 120 over 80, you have level one hypertension, grade one hypertension because of the 80. I want you guys to fact check that and go like, holy shit, he's right. That means that you're hypertensive and you're going to have damage to your IQ, your brain, strokes. You're going to have heart disease, enlarged heart, and it's going to affect your penis and your erections. Wink, wink. And I'm just telling you, when you it's a canary in the coal mine. So B is blood pressure. How do we do it? How do we do it? Weight control. Again, you see what's going on? Wait, wait, wait. Dash. Go to Google, put in Dash diet. You're going to see it's the best diet. I've had so many guys on the app. I just They go, Doc, I, I did the Dash diet. Oh my God, I lost weight. It worked. Now, if you can maintain that, 
You, it's equal to using blood pressure medicine, so it's natural. Okay, and again, I'm not going into the supplements for blood pressure because they're there, but they're not as strong as real medicines. And if you use baby doses of medicines synergistically, well, I'm going to tell you right now that I do, you feel great and you're protected. I just like to live better through chemistry. The supplements can be great, and there are some great supplements. This is for all the anti-haters, you know, the hater guys, the medicine guys. It, it just You, you want to keep your vital signs perfect. This is what I'm doing for you. This video is probably the best video I'm ever going to make. So DASH, diet, high-intensity interval training is going to be great for your vasculature, great for your blood pressure. Now, what else do we do next that I've done? Limit your androgens. Take TRT doses. 200 milligrams a week at the anti-aging place, guys. It's not a TRT dose, guys. It's too much. It's old-fashioned steroids. The old pros used to live on that. At least they used to cruise on that. DHT adjunctive medications. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Little doses of Primo Masteron and Proviron. It's beyond the scope of today. It can work. They're not estrogenic. It's amazing how they can work. And I'm giving you guys the secrets. But I don't, I don't want to hammer too much on that. Come to the app and we could talk about that. Uncensored place and we could talk about that because so many men do. Now, what I don't like is the Nor-19 drugs, DECA, NPP, those are great drugs. They make us strong as hell, but they are they're cause bloating, and, they, and we're not going to go into the, the, the estrogen, guys. We're not going to do it. I'm just telling you, it's, it's great for the shoulders, and you get strong, you're young, but check your blood pressure on 200 milligrams or more of tests with any kind of level of like two or 300 or half that dose of, of NPP even or DECA, you're going to be hypertensive. Even young guys are. Now, so does it matter? Does it, does it matter for six weeks when you're 23? or six years. I, you need to look at your health reserve from a perspective, a global perspective. If you have health reserve, maintain it. Your body is given, when you're, I try to maintain my vital signs like an infant. Beep, 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 little infant. Except my heart rate's not like an infant, but blood pressure is like an infant. It, it really is, they're, they're perfect. When you're small, you're a kid, a baby kid, you have poor blood pressure and your cholesterol is perfect. And your sugar is perfect. I maintain it that way with medicines and with my behavior. I'm bleeding out for you guys. Hope you guys really appreciate this. So you really want to understand the monitor. If you're going to add the steroids a little bit, keep the doses low, take time off, monitor, 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 get the monitor, check it, really get into your blood pressure. You're, with telemedicine, with me on the app, you guys can have everything, man. Every single thing, you can get it perfectly. Use your doctors. I don't want to piss off doctors. Use your doctors with me, with information. All the information, I'm giving you evidence-based, and then you go to your doctor, and that's the boss. That's you and your doctor. All your healthcare, don't even need a doctor anymore. Great nurse practitioner. Oh, let's get some comments from nurse practitioners. Let's get some, do you guys agree with this? Do you think it's bad? I mean, I want to, I want to hear it. This is the future. You're an educated patient consumer, you're getting good information, and then you gotta tailor it to you with your own doctors in your place, but you're at home and you're learning. This is educational. Now, what are the medicines? Let's talk. So blood pressure, I gotta go right into testosterone. I'll talk about the dose. You'll see the number of testosterone. At Nadir, it's normal. And my doctor has to see that because he's my doctor. He doesn't want to overprescribe me. So this is the day, this is day five, typically day five or day six. That's what I do. I do 100 milligrams of sipinate every five to six days. Done. Okay, now, blood pressure medicines. Forget the supplements, guys. I know they can work to some degree, but again, I like to go right for the, the, the real chemistry because I can control it and I know how to use it for me. Now, for a guy of my, my, my characteristics, for my age, for my comorbid states, which means other medical conditions, Telmasartan and the Bivalol are absolutely miracle for me. They keep my blood pressure perfect. They keep this guy down here, wink, wink, perfect. And my heart's perfect. And my kidneys, with the grace of God, are perfect. And I've done steroids. I've gotten away with it somehow. And I'm almost 60. And I'm boom, 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 boom. And I'm still benching big. And if my hand hurts, though... You know, my joints hurt, but my heart and my organs are my number one. That's why I'm killing it for you guys with my brain. And why don't you want to do this? You can do the ABCDs yourself. I'm breaking it down right here. 
I like Telmasartan and the B law, it may be wrong for you. It may come to the app and let me help you with that. Other medications, ACE inhibitors, this is an ARB. That's what Telmasartan is, okay? We have some great data on it. You come to the meetings and we talk about it 24-7. We just love this kind of stuff. A, B, C, Ds. You do it yourself. Let me help you. The calcium channel blocker, depending on what who you are, if it helps you. I've, I, I help you guys put these together on the app just for you and thiazide diuretic. There's no other beta blockers involved in here except for my Nabivalol. There's Cardavalol. But this is, again, the scope of this video is to kind of show you guys what I'm on and food for thought for understanding the ABCDs. There's no role for an AI for blood pressure. That's, I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna myth bust that right now. If your guru or your coach is saying, hey, you're on steroids, you're taking X amount too much, you're full of fluid, it's estrogenic, you're puffy, you're water filled, and you're hypertensive, take an AI, that is fucking cringy and embarrassing. That's it, we're not gonna go into that. Kidney, it just doesn't work that way. It gets, I get angry about that because it's, a, it's not a doctor saying it and it's, they don't work in hospitals and the clinics like I have. And they don't read this. Anyone could read the data, but you're not trained as a doctor. It doesn't, it's going into a brain that just has no experience. I am pissed off at those guys. You guys know who you are and that's bullshit. We got to put an end to that crazy bro science. I don't know everything, but I'm a doctor. And that's what I'm doing right for you guys. I'm very clear that I don't know everything. But I'm doing the best, and I know this stuff, though. And if I don't know this stuff, I work with doctors that know more than me. Cardiology, hematology, nephrology. This is all about being honest and knowing and working together and flying with the eagles, guys. So that's a myth buster. Let's move on. My comprehensive meta... Look at my kidneys right here. Comprehensive metabolic kidney function, my creatinine with the grace of God is 1.16 milligrams per deciliter. And my estimated GFR is, we'll say 73. It's a, it's a, the unit's long. It's milliliters per minute per square, per, per a square uh, uh, position, how much the average person, 1.73 mil, uh, meters squared. Okay, these are estimations, but with the grace of God, guys, my kidney function's perfect. And I'm almost 60, and I've been on androgens for over 30 years, mostly testosterone. But I'm being honest with you guys here. This is straight up honesty. Electrolytes, thank God you see they're normal here. And I'm on telmasartan, which is an ARB, like an ACE inhibitor, and you gotta watch the potassium. Again, more stuff for the videos when you come in and you watch the videos on the Anabolic Doc app and come to the meetings and you understand the stuff, it's really uncensored in there. And the last thing is the Billy Rubin and my liver function with a grace of God, completely normal. Some of those can be bumped. Again, it's very complex and that's why I have to answer those questions on the mailbag, man per man, or we discuss it on the man to man meetings because mine have been bumped. And is it from exercise? Is it from alcohol? Is it from another supplement? Is it from a statin, that, but it's okay because it's not that elevated? Or is it from an anabolic steroid, an oral alpha al alkylated? This is, guys, this is the information that I know you guys really want. Okay, let's move on to C. Now we're at C. Equally as important as A and B is C, stands for cholesterol cardiac and the calcium score. It's not calcium on the labs, guys. It's a CT scan that's very, very modified to see if you have hard plaque in your coronary arteries. Please see more videos on that with me and Dr. Nolan, and please come to the meetings man to man so I could get this to make sure that you really get this information across to you and you understand it. Now, look at my cholesterol. Let's talk about it. Wait till you see what I'm on here. This is like, put the thinking caps on. This is absolutely better living through chemistry, guys. Cholesterol, for me, on this date, less than a month ago, total cholesterol, 112 milligrams per deciliter. My LDL, this is interesting, 52 milligrams per deciliter. Triglycerides, 86 milligrams per deciliter. My HDL, 43 milligrams per deciliter. All right, now, I like to keep my LDLs in the 30s to 40s because I have some plaque in the artery and I, I removed it. I delipified. You could see the video how I reverse my heart disease. I'm doing this over and over for you guys. 
I like my LDLs to be a little bit lower. I was a little bit disappointed in myself that my LDL was in the 50s, but I'm not going to get crazy. Let's go into what you guys need to understand. Everyone from the current data, from the lipidology data, not the cardiology data, the lipidology guys that can be cardiologists, they could be endocrinologists or internal medicine doctors like me, but this is my wheelhouse. I'm telling you right now, everyone from a young age needs an LDL less than 85 milligrams per deciliter. There's data for this right now. And again, if, if, if you're 100, 101, this is like you have to understand these ABCDs by a doctor in light of your, your other conditions, your, your family history, your genes, and what else you got. But here's the deal. Most people, you're going to do better. This is all evidence-based medicine. Your lipidology, guys. Lipidology. Go check it out. Lip, you, oh my, you, you're going to be like, I can't believe there's a, lip, I, there's a doctor called a lipidologist? Hell uh, Yeah. These are new doctors. They've been around for 20 years. They're not that new. Your doctor may not even know about a lipidology doctor because he's overwhelmed with everything else. You guys got to focus, laser focus with me right here. Most people want to be your LDL. That's a, such an important, that's the bad cholesterol. You want to have it under 70. If you have any calcium score that has anything but a zero, especially at 30 to 40, you want to have an LDL less than 50. I'll tell you that right now. That's my opinion, but I could support it. And I, I like to be aggressive, as you can see. But I feel great. And I delipified from one calcium score to another in four years by almost 20%. Because this is right here. Probably C. I do the A, I do the B, and this C. Check out this and check out what I'm on. So, check a lipid panel. If you have, do you have family history or do you have your dad or your mom has early heart disease? Is it running in the family? Even if you think it is, don't do a calcium score if you're 22. It's just too young. But around late 20s with family history and if you have any cardiac disease, if you've had a stent or a bypass or a heart attack, you don't need the calcium score because you have a cardiologist and they're probably doing, they're doing more. Or maybe you can get a CT angio. This is super complicated where I have to say, I can't give you more information than what I'm going to give you here. You need to work with your doctors appropriately. It can get very dangerous here. And you can come for questions with me on the man-to-man -man meetings. That's why it's an, it's an uncensored place. And I will hear the, the questions. I respond in front of a lot of men so everyone gets to hear. That was my dream, and it's happening right now on the anabolicdocapp.com. So you check your lipid panel first. Do you have family history of premature heart disease? Do you have heart disease with a calcium score? This is really going to be more for guys that are 30, late 20s and 30. You want to kill it. You want to live like me the long life and never have heart disease that causes a bypass or a heart attack. 100% you could do this. It, I can't believe we're not going into staging heart disease like we do for breast cancer. I can't believe we're not doing this when we have the tools to do it. I'm giving it all to you right now. 90% of these medicines are, are dirt cheap and you don't even want medicines? Just lose enough weight and keep it all natural. You won't even need these medicines potentially, but Dr. Dr. Nolan, who's a lipidologist, he would argue that it's not, it's not realistic for people to think they can do everything with diet and exercise because there's some genetics on here and just getting older, you're going to have vascular disease. Guys, I'm not trying to bullshit and sell you stuff. Number one, go to Google. Number one cause of death. It's heart disease. A, B, C, D. Okay, guys, check a lipid panel first. You can get the lipid panel with no doctor subscription on the Anabolic Doc app. You could see it. Now, if you want to go the next step, after you do the basic, grab the low-hanging fruit, get a history and physical, ABC, we're on the C, get the calcium score, get on the, on the C if you have plaque in the artery, if you're 30 or older, don't do it if you're younger, unless it's a special case. I want to give good information. You could get an advanced lipid panel. I do agree. 20% of the world has something called LP little a. It's genetic. You typically find it when you see someone that has 
genes in the family. My dad had early heart disease or my mom. And they, they, something doesn't make sense. You get a calcium score. Maybe you're 35 or 40 and it looks like you have a positive calcium score. And you go, wow, is it just my LDL? Or what's going on with my LP little a and apolipoprotein B? You could get this advanced health. It's called heart and metabolism health just on the app. I give you guys this all on the app. You could order it in almost every state in America. You can do this with no doctor. It's prescription. And you could look at a highly sensitive CRP. We're getting into that now. We're, 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 we're staging things now. Do at this point, do you have this done? Now do you have, uh, do you have a residual risk because you have uh, some highly sensitive CRP or some inflammation elevated? There's things you could do. Okay, there's other things you could do with diet, exercise, and there's some new medicines. Coltracine, okay, I'm not gonna go into it. Really, really cool, guys. I love the medicines because if you use them properly and early, you just feel great. And it, it's better for sex. It keeps this guy going and the brain going, the IQ going, and the heart going. It's all tied in. So what can you do with cholesterol? Weight, 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 all the same stuff, guys. Weight control, dash diet, high-intensity interval training. But let's go into the medicines, guys. Thinking caps on, my, so statin regimen, that's going to be number one. Don't hate on the damn drugs, guys, but they do have side effects. Let me teach you something here. So there's a standard regimen, which is every day versus every other day. Dr. Paul Thompson is, is a top preventive cardiologist up in Connecticut. He was my mentor, and he's in his 70s now. He was on the Olympic team. Um for uh, marathon running. He's just a, a guy's, a, the guy's, a, guy's incredible. He's, to, he's look at so many research papers with statins and he's a preventive guy with the C, the cholesterol and all these medicines and PCSK nines. And I like that. I like to take it every other day. Another secret guys, I take Resuvastatin. It's generic Crestor. It's a hydrophilic statin versus the, versus the, the hydrophobic and the lipophilic ones that can go more into the muscles, guys. Really interesting. So I like resuvastatin. These labs right here, I'm on resuvastatin, 10 milligrams every other day. And I take an addition to that, what I call statin sparing medicine. I made that up. Statin sparing. I made that up. PCSK9 Repatha, 140 milligrams every two weeks. It's a sub-Q pen. With that, look at my cholesterol, guys. My LDL is 52. That's really going to hit the... I don't have LP little a or A poly. I don't... Advanced lipid panel is not something that happens for me. And when you check the advanced lipid panel, like an LP little a that I have recently, a friend that has a very high one, that's genetic. And now we have to work around that because it's very complicated. And I've done videos on that. And I'll keep talking about that because I research this stuff all the time. And I have to farm out and send him to a specialist who's a lipidologist. Okay, so Zadia is an add-on, guys. It's an add-on. You don't use it as a sole agent, in my opinion. It's just weak. It's an add-on if you have statin-induced myalgias, SIMS. You see that? Above. That's where you, can, you, you can't use any more of the statin, so they start switching them. They, they typically end up at resuvastatin. Atorvastatin is great, too. I don't like simvastatin. There's lovastatin. There's pravastatin. Guys, there are different statins. You have fingerprints. Typically, in the end of the day, it's resuvastatin, generic cholesterol because it's hydrophilic, and it doesn't get into the muscles versus it can, it can do its job in the liver. And it's not liver toxic, guys. You, look at my liver enzymes. They're perfect. So 10 milligrams every other day. I like the preotropic effects, endothelial effects. Guys, listen to me. And, and I have no, I, I never have inflammation. I didn't check it on this panel, but I checked it before in the last six months and it's never elevated with the grace of God. So again, Zadia, can you add it on to, an, to a, when you want to get your goal of LDL, see that should be 85 it's got to be less than 100. I can't be, if you're 130 or something, you are out of the ballpark. You better come to the meetings and really get into this. This is what I'm doing for you guys. You have to, you, and don't just copy my medicines because they're good for me, with me and my doctors. So they work with me. Of course, I tell them, I tell them what to do for a lot of the stuff and they love me, but they fact check and they go, well, you're right, but I'm an internist, right? I don't do urology. That's for damn sure. That guy does everything. He takes that prostate. That's his. Zadia, 
I like to add Zadie potentially on the regimen I'm on. Maybe if I can't cut my weight down, I'm doing the best I can. I was eating too much. It shows you that I'm really partying too much and I'm eating too much, having too much of a great time. And my LDI went from like 30 something to 52. We're not getting crazy, guys. But it is interesting. I've talked to some of my other experts out there, some of you guys, because you guys love this stuff. And I may add a little Zadia maybe two or three times a week just to bump me down with my current lifestyle, the way things are right here, kind of overweight. It seems like I'm eating because I'm usually lower on the, I'm usually in the 30s on the LDL, but I didn't change anything. And I'm not going to change the statin and I'm not changing the PCSK9 and I've delipified. But I probably should keep it a little bit lower, but this is, I'm like near perfect. I'm like not, for me, I'm just criticizing myself. This is like, if he went to a doctor, my labs are perfect, especially for a guy who's almost 60. All right, guys. So Zadia, I told you about that. Sim, statin-induced myalgias. I got to hit you with this. Bempidoic acid is new. It's for people that have issues tolerating statins. This is a great medication. Go to Google. Bempidoic acid. You better have a good cardiology or lipid or an internist like me. I don't like it as an add-on for me because tendon tendon ruptures, I'm bencher. I'm a big bencher still. I don't want to pop. I already tore my pec. And, and gout, and there's some other side effects I just don't like. But I don't like that tendon disease. But again, could you use it if, guys, if you can't take any more statins and you can't get the PCSK9, and the Zadia is weak, but it, you could add Zadia to statins. It, it Improve it. I believe the trial is called Improve It. That's the trial, guys. I'm always using trials. I'm always telling you real, real not trials. I'm using evidence. It's called Improve It. Go to Google, Zadia, improve it, and you'll see maximum tolerate statin. You want, you need extra horsepower so you don't have a heart attack. They've already had heart disease. They add little Zadia, 10 milligrams a day. That's it. It's also generic and it's well tolerated. And I don't believe it's going to cause cancer. There's some deal on that. I don't think it's anything to do with that at all. Now, I'm going to close C with this. Another huge medication that I take is Vasipa. It's an EPA-derived fish oil. It's very special, and it's 1,000 milligram tablets. I take two in the morning and two at night. I, it's been great for my joints. Now, guys, I'm not selling nothing here. I take this stuff, and I have to pay for this stuff. Sometimes my insurance covers it because we can get the prior off through. My doctor can, but sometimes it doesn't, and I have to buck up with good RX. But this is my C. Look at the numbers. That's my C. But the, 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 the Vasipa... Is, is something quiet. I don't do it for the triglycerides. It's called the reduce it trial. And it's, I like that trial, but I don't fit in that trial because my, I don't have a, a stent or bypass, but I did have plaque in the artery, but I want to keep away from that. But I, I, like the, I liked how powerful it was on the endothelial plaque and the atherosclerosis. I like the mechanism of action. So I liked it and I've been on it for five years and it's absolutely wonderful. The brain... Again, downstairs, below, wink, wink, with nitric oxide, with my whole regimen, with everything I'm using here. And of course, I'm, on, I'm also on uh, Tadalafil. I kind of left it off here because there's no labs to show that. That's just great life. And for the BPH and for the pump and for the sex and the brain and nitric oxide, there's data for this for the heart protection. And so that's why I'm just talking about this. Vasipa for me is absolutely one of the wonders for me. I had to throw it in here under the sea and I did delipify. I removed hard plaque. It's almost impossible to do. And you know I have no soft plaque because the, I'm removing hard plaque. Very complex information and data for when you look at a calcium score, hard plaque versus a CT angio or angiography with soft plaque. Definitely beyond the scope of this. You can come to the meetings. We can get more into it if you bring some of your studies. So that wraps up C, guys. Let's move on to D. Now we come down to D. We've done A, we've done B and C. Those are huge. D stands for deposition disease. This is something that's only going to be relevant for men on androgens. Everything else I did, A, B, C, your mother could benefit from that. Anyone could benefit. That's heart disease, A, B, C's. A, 1, C, glycemic index, blood pressure, and cholesterol. Everyone. This is going to be unique for men on androgens. 
deposition. Are you at risk of depositing iron into your liver or your heart or your brain? Listen to this. It's called androgen-induced erythrocytosis. That's the AIE. You have to understand the CBC, hemoglobin hematocrit. I talk about this all day long with my patients because I have to micromanage my patients with this. This is the interplay of testosteronology, androgens, and hematology. It's all internal medicine. Now, my hemoglobin is 16.6 grams per deciliter. My hematocrit is 48.4%. Now, you can never look at that alone. If your doctor or you are looking at that alone or your guru, your coach, you're, it's, it's half. You're wrong and you're only looking at half. You're not wrong. You're just not doing everything fully properly. You need to look at iron studies, which include the total iron, the saturation, and the ferritin. Of course, there's, there's globulins in there too. Now, guys, you come to the meetings for these and we analyze these all the time. You have to understand this. You need to get your CBC that has the hemoglobin hematocrit and then you have to, on the side, it doesn't come together. I gave this on the, on the labs for you. You can get all this on the anabolicdocapp.com with the labs with no doctor's prescription. You can look at the CBC, your hematocrit. You could understand it and you could then integrate in the ferritin. Let's talk about mine. Look at mine. Look at my ferritin, 139 nanograms per milliliter, and look at my iron saturation, transferrin saturation percent, 35. Guys, I haven't given blood in at least five years. Here's what I did for myself. Now, I'm gonna try to get this through across to you guys. This is a complex pathophysiologic mechanism, including your genes, the gut, your liver, so many other interplay, it's so much interplay with hematology and understanding the steroids too. It's a man per man basis. The goal for the hemoglobin is equal to or less than 18. If your doctor says that 17 is too high, he's wrong, he or she is wrong. I'm not saying, but, but if they know it, they, they, they know it and it's for you, that's the deal. But a lot of physicians don't realize the full gamut for hemoglobin hematocrit is up to 18 grams per deciliter, equal to or less than. That's just a natural man, not on just a... Fact check that. Fact check. What is the true range in, say, North America? Or you could, you could do... There's different unit conversions for all over the world. But it's 18 or 180 for the guys in Europe. 18 grams per deciliter. It's not to say that you have to live there. And then you could have symptoms with blurry vision and headache. It could be shortness of breath. You could be getting damaged. But it doesn't mean that if you're 17-2, you have to start phlebotomizing. You need to understand this just like the other stuff. I know it's a complex video, guys. That's why you got the app here to help you. You have to understand that it's somewhere less than 18 and less than 52 to 54, but the hematocrit can go up to 52 and 54, and that's normal. If you go to a lab, you see the reference range, they're gonna use that as a reference range, you're gonna be confused. Your doctor may not understand this. Okay, ferritin. Ferritin stands for two things. Number one, it's a storage form of iron. You have to look at it circulating, you have to look at it in respect to who you are, what you're on, and how's your hemoglobin hematocrit? Do you have polycythemia with high ferritin, low ferritin? There's a lot of permutations and combinations. Look at my ferritin, it's 139. I don't want it lower, I don't want to. Imagine I phlebotomized, that would be ridiculous. I'd be tanking, look at my, my iron saturation, that would tank, and I'd be, I would not be anemic based on hemoglobin, but I could be iron depleted and feel terrible. You got it, guys? Replay that right there if you want to. You need to do this yourself. This is D is the most complex physiologic, pathophysiologic mechanism that I've developed with hematology doctors over 20 years with thousands of you guys, men's, men on androgens. Now, do you have that you want to keep the ferritin under 200? It's a warning if it's three or 400. I have guys that have, I had a guy with over 1,700. We had to phlebotomize him once a week for, I think, six months. He's working with hematology. I wouldn't do that. I have to work with hematology. I know how to, how to deliver. I know when to take a patient 
and work with another doctor. I want to teach you guys this the best we can. That's why the app is here. So you understand what to do and then we go to the right experts. In the future, it's going to be you understanding what you have and, and certified uh, experts using your experts. The walk-in clinic is just going to be a traffic cop. I'm telling you right now because you don't have a really primary care doctor that has all the resume and the experience that I do. That's why I'm, I'm scaling myself with the app for you guys. And if you do, forgive me. For some of you guys do have a doctor with my qualifications and experience and board certifications and years of training and, and, and the ability to just constantly churn and read and study 24-7 on, I just read about the ABCDs. I don't read anything else on women's health. I can't. I don't read on all these. I focus on 24-7 on protecting men's hearts, ABCDs. So let's keep going, guys. You have to understand, if you have a family history of hereditary hemochromatosis, then iron storage, iron storage disease, you have to understand, that's what that ferritin will show you. It's, it's, it's also a storage form. It's also an acute phase reactant where you can look at inflammation. It can be elevated or if you had a trauma. So be careful with that and just looking at one number. If you don't like it, guys, you repeat it. This is very crucial to understand. This is how internal medicine, we typically don't make a decision on one number for diabetes or for anything here. We look at it. We do something. If it's dangerous, if it's like a life-threatening, you go to the ER. The guys in the ER, whole different, they have a whole different philosophy, whole different criteria in there. This is armchair. I'm armchair medicine guy. Armchair. You're not, this is not acutely dangerous. This is long term. This is living a long life, understanding all these variables. Again, so let's talk about how you manage this D, understanding your ferritin, your hemoglobin hematocrit, understanding your genes. You have to understand, do you have genes? And then if you have genes for this, typically it's it's Northern European ancestry. Me, guy like me. Doesn't mean that any other man can't have it. It just means that that's going to be a slam dunk guy. And when you see the steroids and testosterone, the drugs, <clears throat> there's no question that testosterone, some guys can't even take testosterone because their red blood cells go through the roof. Guys, but if this is what I'm saying, don't do testosterone or steroids if you have any of these genes or it's going to be a problem because it's going to be too much work. You're going to be phlebotomizing. You, what if you can't phlebotomize? You can't phlebotomize yourself into a drain in the sink. I've already seen that by a guy. You can't buy these kits online. You have to go to a medical phlebotomy center or the American Red Cross. And it, you may not need phlebotomy. And I'm going to show you how. I'm going to teach you how. How do you keep this down? You know your genes. You don't take too much test. Test and DECA, great for strength in the bench or equipoise. But you see right here, this is one example. Why can't I do test and DECA? I love it. It's great, doc. Wow. You see test and DECA, what it does, you can fact track this. What that combination does for increasing the red blood cells, huh? and not to mention the ferritin, potentially if you have that genetically, or if you're overweight and you have sleep apnea. But steroids cause sleep apnea, so this thing is a whole vicious cycle. This is a chicken or the egg, a lot of guys. Doc, this is like a chicken or the egg. Absolutely. So again, stay lean. Keep TRT doses. Try not to add other drugs. It is true that I think if you're adding some drugs, the DHT derived, the Primos, the Masterons, and the Provirons, even though it's weak, I think those don't do too much to this because I've seen it. Now, what else can you do? You could, you could microdose. It's true. Instead of taking that big hit every week or even twice a week, you know, 200 a week, I take 100 twice a week, you know, like boom, boom, boom. It's like microdose further, maybe even transition. Some patients of mine, we have to transition to gel. It's just a lower stimulation for the androgen receptor. When you look at this androgen induced erythrocytosis process, it's just, you're just, it's with hepcidin and erythropoietin and the stem cells and all the oxygen. It's too complicated, guys. It's, it's but I look at it, this is what I do. So you have to monitor this. That's where you need the CBC and the iron studies. And again, when you really get this going, I check it every six months, mainly for my doctor too, because he wants to see it. And he, my doctor always looks at this and goes, oh my God, how do you do that? Well, here's my video doctor, but it's a full-time job. So keep the doses, guys. Try to go TRT. This is just TRT. Yeah, I throw some extra stuff in here and there, but baby stuff. And I, I don't want to do that. 
I've done that in the past, guys, but stay on TRT. Microdosing, transition to gel if you need to. Here's other secrets here. These are the secrets. Green tea, curcumin, and telmosartan. If you look at the data on this, they and my guess is this is why I look so good on paper here when I've had the problems. In the past, I've been over 18. My ferritin's even been higher. But I, I don't eat much red meat, maybe once a week. Listen, guys, I've trimmed down. I used to be over 200. Now I'm in, in the low, mid-90s. I like to stay 190s. I'm only 5'9", probably 5'8 now, <laughs> shrinking as I get older. Damn it. And I still want to be strong on the bench and do what I can. And I keep the cardio up again. And I use the green tea, the curcumin, and I'm on telmosartan. And this combination has kept, I can't believe it, for years, my, my D, perfect. Look at my hemoglobin, guys. 16, my, my hemoglobin 16.6 grams per deciliter, my moderate under 50% with no phlebotomizing, and my ferritin's fine, and my iron's not tanked. Oh my God, guys, I can't tell you how important this is. And I want to help you understand this, so you've got to come to the man-man meetings. You'll come. And then you, all the guys that are there, the veterans that are there, they, they've been there for a long time. They come to as many meetings as they can per week. There's three meetings a week. They, they learn this because they hear all the other men. And they, oh, it doesn't happen overnight. So phlebotomize as needed, guys. Be careful to monitor the CBC, and you can get this on androgens monitoring on my app. You can get these labs yourself or get with your doctor or somewhere. Go to a walk-in clinic. Don't overdo it. Check the CBC and the iron studies. Okay, that's D. Last one is my ABCDs. So that's an S, right? It's a little S. It stands for PSA and skin screening and screening for colorectal cancer and esophageal cancer if you have heartburn. That's it. If you follow the ABCDs, with the grace of God, guys, you're not going to miss anything, including skin cancer and your prostate. Now look at my PSA, 0.7. I'm almost 60. With the grace of God, my PSA has never been even close to, not one or over. The PSA does move around, guys, especially if you're on testosterone. You better, this, is the, this, this one, you need a urologist. When you're over the age of 40 to 50, you better have a urologist to, to check. This finger doesn't go in any more rear ends. You need a urologist. I monitor it with all my patients, and I make sure all my patients have their own digital rectal exam by a qualified healthcare provider. I like to have urologists, but it's not even happening anymore. And even the centers of excellence are changing this. Ah, you don't really need a digital rectal. Oh my God, what? But there's no resources. You just can't get to these doctors, but that's wrong. You make noise, squeaky wheels, get oil. All right, guys, and then my last piece here is my testosterone. I had to show it for you and my doctor. Look at that right there. That's the nadir at day five on 100 milligrams a week, guys. That's a real number. 656 nanograms per deciliter. My freeze 135. I'm humble to say that's the nadir. I feel great. You don't need steroid doses. And my ultra-sensitive estradiol is a little baby bit elevated. That's the only thing on my whole labs that's out of is my ultra sensitive estradiol, but I'm in the 40s and the picogram per mil scale. Okay, and it's a little bit over. Guys, I like a little estrogen. Don't be, don't listen to the gurus and just block estrogen. Or if your doctor is anti aging, he doesn't have the experience. When you block, if I was using an estrogen blocker, my 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 HDL cholesterol would be dangerously low. It would be. And I, why do I want it when I feel great? You want to lower testosterone? Excuse me. You want to lower estrogen? Lower testosterone. Microdose. Lose weight. Try to keep all these variables perfect. All right, guys. Whew. Hope you guys really like this. This is my labs. I want to show you guys, and you could do all this stuff yourself. I want to see you on the man-to-man -man meetings where I'm going to help you guys really get all this stuff done, ABCDs, just for yourself, man-to-man. -man. Thank you so much, guys. Give us the comments.
This is what you get with the Anabolic Doc app. Number one, a digital history and physical exam. Number two, weekly Zoom meetings with me. Number three, discounted commercial labs. Number four, weekly member only uncensored videos. Number five, Anabolic Doc's mailbag. You can't come to the meetings or you don't wanna to come to the meetings. You ask a question, I wanna to respond to your question by making a video, put it back up on the app and you get to see your own question Lastly, Diagnostic and Management Library that is easily searchable by keywords.